and welcome to not another repaint video. I'm Hannah from Hoodles and this time I'm making a familiar for Tia, my battleship doll. I was a bit ambivalent, should I make a parrot and follow the pirate theme or should I make some sort of shrimp? The shrimp doll has to wait, it still needs to happen though, because I ended up making a furry Storsjöjur, or something like it, a sea creature at least. So Storsjöjuret is a lake beast that lives in Storsjön, it's first mentioned in 1635 in a legend about two trolls cooking something in a cauldron and from the brew Storsjöjuret was born. In 1986 the county administry board forbid people from killing, harming and catching living Storsjöjur but you know the environmental court ruled it well not scientifically based and the protection was revoked in 2006. People are still chasing it, trying to prove its existence which is super cool. Anyway it was fun making this little fella even though it's quite different from the familiars I usually make. On a side note someone asked if I would make prints out of these illustrations and I might someday in the future even though the original will follow the dolls but I have started and I know this might sound a bit pretentious I I don't know but I started on painting little chibi illustrations for the monopoly dolls those are meant to be turned into stickers because I love stickers and well we need more stickers in our lives I'll finish the collection after finishing the series so no rush let's make a little sea monster as usual I start out making ice by adding blobs of liquitex gloss varnish before adding cabochons these eyes are printed and I must say that my laser jet did an okay job on these after drying Drying overnight I cut them out and can start sculpting. I make a base before adding the eyes, creating the super weird face. Then I continue by making some cat-like cheeks. I make a broad nose like on a dragon. I probably should have used more reference pictures making this, but you know what? Sometimes I skip the references because A, I like disappointing myself every once in a while to stay grounded, and B, it's fun to see if one can make something new. Then I make the eyelids and work on the texture. I wanted an open and curious expression and I think I managed it pretty well. I use a needle to make holes for the whiskers, then I use a hole punch to create scales. It's a start, let's make some antler things, arms and legs. My dragon tattoo has a pair of these so I wanted to make them for Ness. First I twist them and poke two holes at the ends to sew them like buttons. Then I made heart shaped arms and a pair of fins for feet. I also made the eyelids look scaly like on a snake. After baking I take the pieces of the forms. Here are all the pieces, but as someone mentioned on my steampunk fox, it doesn't have a third eye. Oh no! So I made one to put on the chest. I've never done this before, so it was a bit of a gamble. I use a long fur fabric this time. With the help of my standard familiar pattern, I cut out pieces and then cut the fur along the seam allowance. It helps a lot while sewing. Then, taking care to fold the fur inside, I sew the darts. Then I sew the sides together, leaving a bit of a seam to fold it right side out. I push a cutter pin joint through the head circle, then I push it through the top of the body. No cutting, only violence. Then I bend the legs with pliers. I sew around the circle with running stitches, then I put stuffing inside the body before closing the head circle with more stuffing inside. Finally I sew the seam that I left on the body before trimming the long fur. I use my X-Acto knife to make an incision. This is my first time doing this, so I'm not sure what I'm doing. After making the incision, I insert the eye and glue it with super glue like there is no tomorrow. Time for some airbrushing stuff, finally. I use blue and yellow to make different kinds of blue, then I airbrush both the body, faceplate, arms and feet. I finish it off with a coat of Liquitex matte varnish before leaving it for a couple of hours. I'm not showing that though, it's boring. Then I use Colera paints to make them sparkle. I use the same one as on the little Storsjöjur I made for Tia. The 
This is my favorite part, scraping the paint and sealant off the eyes. Now I can attach the head plate with hot glue. I decided pretty early that I wanted to add sequins as scales among all the fur. It took a while and a really good movie to do it, but it turned super pretty in the end. After making the back, I added the same ones on the head. Then I added the horns before sewing the arms and feet. I super glued some hairs from a brush as whiskers. I love adding whiskers in this case, it kind of made it look a bit feline. Finally, I glossed some parts with Liquitex gloss varnish. Among all the blue, I made a pink ornament like on Tia. These bells are so pretty. And well, that was it. A short little familiar video, but now Tia has her sea creature that can help her in the battle of Monopoly. Next, I'm making the iron. I'm combining it with sci-fi and some electronic components. I think it's going to be rather cute. It's been challenging, but super fun. Look at me talking about it like it's finished. Well, in fact, I've only done some soldering, but yeah, it's getting there. As I mentioned in the last video, unfortunately I'll post videos every second week since I'm working and studying simultaneously and I want to spend time on quality, both at work, in my studies and in this hobby, so there is that. I want to thank my Patreons too, thank you so much for your love and support, I hope you like Ness, I'll post a question 24 hours from posting this video, the first one to answer correctly will be Ness new owner, so let me introduce this little rascal. It's a female, and I'm in love with the scales. They're so sparkly. Thank you so much for watching the process of Little Ness, T.S. Familiar. I hope you're having a wonderful day, or, you know, evening, depending on when you're watching this. Until next time, bye!